today is my third day in nagaland this uh, this particular time this stint we've had a uh, back to back programs i commend the chief minister for having organized a csr plus investment conclave in kohima uh, nagaland very much requires a good exposure to investments and uh, also look at projects which can benefit from csr i did mention this even during the program this is always a conundrum where the csr funds can come where there is no investment and unless investments are already in a state their csrs being spent in that state as a natural consequence is what people pick up on but nagaland is still yet to get as much investment as it is capable of absorbing and uh, as a result it does also run short of csr but this one call by the honorable chief minister of nagaland which he met and also gave me uh, in sometime early this year march sometime this year as a result you've had quite a good number of csr offering each one tied to some good projects which will benefit and mostly i saw an accent on health related projects so procuring good high end equipments for hospital procuring uh, medical equipments uh, also making sure the hospitals get facilities like for instance one of the program that i will be concluding today uh, my visit with is a dialysis center which one of the csr funds has started up here so csr as a result of that one call from honorable chief minister early this year has brought in quite a big number of in, uh, fund uh, givers and as a result there are quite a few projects which have come out 34 i think uh, if i remember the number of projects nakul well, how many csr projects were there totally 136 36 projects have been announced to a total amount of uh, 38 crores 38 crores and of which i mean 38 crores over and above that some of them were yet to come because the projects have not been completely presented to them they are ready with the money we had planned that we'll come with a 50 crore announcement now it has reached 38 crores i think and uh, the rest of it will be made up sooner if that is one side of the story the investment uh, interest you saw in the conclave that quite a few of these uh, uh, investors had come industries had come who are keen to uh, work uh, on possible uh, ways of investing in nagaland from uh, the ministry side we wanted to ensure that there are enough bank access to uh, nagaland as a result we had uh, the complete review of how many districts benefit from the presence of banks and uh, those districts which are really not as much uh, covered by banks they should be banking facility provided just for your uh, information i want to say dimapur has the maximum presence of banks uh, 94 branches in total uh, which is both public sector rrbs and many private banks as well uh, second comes kohima with 58 uh, in total public sector rural bank and others as well and third place goes to mokokchong um, fourth is wuka uh, and fifth is mon now in mon incidentally yesterday we had uh, opened up a private sector bank access banks branch uh in all totally in nagaland 271 branches are prevalent of banks both of public sector and private sector just only public sector and regional rural banks 
of the 271, 200 bank branches are of public sector banks and regional rural banks. Now, through the Jandan Yojana, accounts have been opened for all the citizens. Uh, as a result, a total cumulative direct benefit transfer amount which has reached Nagaland, DBT transfers to people who get it into their account. It could be for one category or the other which in which they are entitled to get the money. 287 crores have been given DBT to the person concerned. It goes into the account. A cumulative total of 287 crores have been reached. Um, yesterday during the presentation in the banking conclave, I had uh, spoken about different schemes, how many got covered, how many persons got covered, what's the total amount and yesterday exclusively in that program how many were added on to that total. I'm not going to go into that but what uh, is important for people in Nagaland to know and through the media I'd like to present that here is uh, Nagaland certainly requires a lot of help in terms of resources. Yesterday, while uh, uh, the Chief Minister had invited me to meet his cabinet colleagues, he had given me a detailed presentation of what the situation is about the capital and the current account and the balance uh, that is their deficit. Uh, all that has been explained. But I just want to highlight some data through you for the people of Nagaland. Tax devolution to Nagar has increased to 13,782 crores, 13,782 crores in the period of 2014 to 19, compared to just 3,844 crores, 3,844 crores during the period of 2009 to 14. So, comparing similar periods, that is 2014 to 19 to 9 to 14, you can see that from 3844, I've already mentioned that number 3844, it has gone up to 13,782 crores. Now, that is what is due, collected total tax collected and amounts to be devolved per a formula given by the Finance Commission to each state. That's gone up. Now, grants and aid, which come from the center, has also gone up. Grants and aid for the same period I'm talking about, 2014-19, compared with 2009-14. Between 14-19, it has reached 29,000 483 crores, 29483 crores, whereas it was between 2009 and 14, it was 20,812 crores. You can see a clear increase of more than 9,000 crores, 20,812 crores. So these are some <coughs> of the points which I want to highlight. Now for this year, this 22 to 23, the year in which we are, the total grants, Finance Commission based grants, which is what I read to you earlier, grants and aid, grants from the centre to Nagal for this year 22 to 23 will be 4,773 crores. That's the budgetary allocation I'm talking about. There's always this question about infrastructure, particularly when it comes to Nagaland. Other than the usual infrastructure funds which come to the state, I just want to highlight that during the COVID year, we had extended a special assistance for states 
for building their uh, infrastructure. That is therefore a scheme of special assistance to states for capital expenditure. It was given to all states, particularly for Northeast, we had allocated a total sum, every state could get their share. Um, that's a very important aspect and it helped states during the COVID years, 2020, 2021 and it was extended further to 22. Now 23, we have come up with a total of 1 lakh crore for all states from which again Nagaland can benefit and that will be an interest-free 50-year billet so they can use it for any one major project that they want or one or two projects. But I highlight uh, a special program which was designed for the Northeast called the PM Divine which is called P-M-D-E-V-I-N-A which is uh, development of infrastructure in the Northeast. D-E-V for development, I for infrastructure, and E for the Northeast. So PM Divine. Uh, we made a total allocation initially of 1,500 crores for the entire Northeast. States could bid proposals. They can be greenfield, they can be brownfield. And in that, without going further into the details, I would specifically state that the state of Nagaland may submit capital expenditure project proposals in any sector up to an amount of 1,600 crores to meet any developmental infrastructure uh, requirement. There will be a component of it, um, about 20% of the component, which will be tied to some reforms. 80% of this amount can be untied. You can take it as it is. The 20% is tied only because we want to make sure together with these kind of monies which you're receiving, you're also bringing in those reforms which otherwise you find it difficult. So one or two steps have been given which I'm sure the state government will consider in the interest of better governance and take it up from there. I, my opening statements, I just wanted to highlight these particular things. I also will finally, I mean, I'll conclude by saying this and leave it open for the house to ask questions. Smart City Mission, 17 out of the 35 projects of Kohima Smart City are completed. The central government has also released a total of 245 crores for Kohima City alone, that smart city project, out of which 195.99 crores have been utilized as of 8 July 2022. So I just want to highlight that. Uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, the various benefits which have been released but one thing I'd like to add PM Kisan which the PM releases on a regular basis money is released for farmers uh, 2,13,603 2, beneficiaries of Kisan, uh, PM Kisan in the state of Nagaland regular release of funds reach 2,13,603 farmers beneficiary farmers in the state of Nagaland. Similarly, Jan Arogya Yojana, which is the PM Jan Arogya Yojana, in which up to 5 lakhs a family can benefit, in that also 81 empaneled hospitals are there in Nagaland and 2.54 lakh e-health cards have been already issued. E-health cards are very very important because the patient can go to the hospital and ask for treatment without showing any more papers or pay cash so that e-card does it all for you and that has been issued to 2.54 lakh beneficiaries and this is for 
PM Jan Arogya Yojana. Ujwala Yojana, I think the data is already available with you, I'll just highlight. But for the media's sake, we are giving you a complete compilation of every data. Even if you've written it down or if you're not, you will get a copy of this running to some several pages. It goes into greater detail of every uh, scheme, of every tax being devolved, every program that is getting covered. So I won't spend more time in, into the details, but you're welcome. I'm sure my people will distribute that as soon as the press conference is over. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. If there are any questions from the media, can. Thank you, ma'am, for a gracious present in the three days to now then. In the three days, you have made. Oh, my name is Mohan Jamir from the Morocco Express. Uh, during the three days, you have, you must have been a lot of stakeholders. So, in your personal opinion, is Nagalin a case of underfunding or mismanagement? And as a supplementary, as the Union Finance Minister, what suggestion would you give to the State Finance Minister? And my second question is that on the first day you spoke about adult degrading labs and one district, one product. On the second day during the during the bankers coming lab, you corrected banks and the state government machineries to undertake outreach campaign for welfare schemes. So does it mean is it a recognition that the welfare scheme are not reaching the beneficiaries or producing desired result by the government of the day over the years, including the, the present government in which the BTV is also a party. Thank you. Um, you packed several things into what you call two questions, but it turns out four questions. Okay. So first thing, um, for a logistic challenging state because of its terrain, the nature of the terrain. Infrastructure is always a big issue and infrastructure is never built overnight. It's always built over several years but for whatever reason over the decades and this is just not of Nagaland, it is also true of the rest of the country but in Nagaland it has specifically even more big challenges because of, as I said, the hilly terrain. Um, so infrastructure is now really catching up. It's also catching up because of the impetus uh, being given uh, under the PM Gati Shakti. Now, as regards resources, I've read out how much of resources were available for Nagaland, say between 2009 and 14, and how much is now available. And as a result of now <coughs> increased available resources, you see lots more activity happening in the ground. So infrastructure is ramped up, a lot more facilities are reaching villages. The internet connectivity is also happening in villages. Now, as a result of which, there is a reason now to benefit from aggregation and that is why the CSR and also looking at further investments. Uh, the infrastructure financing, I've said Government of India is giving uh, during the two years and now increased funding without interest. There are grants being, almost grants being given uh, for which I'm sure the state government will come up with more project proposals which we can very quickly ramp up and give. Uh, you're, you're interpreting my giving a call to the banks to go to the districts as uh, possibly projects not reach, I mean, the schemes not reaching the ground is not actually the way I would look at it because I read out the details yesterday and the, uh, the booklet which has been given to you has all, all the details. Banks will have to access credible, eligible uh, borrowers for every scheme. Now if those who are eligible for it have to be identified there is a special effort to be made. Bank staffing may not be adequate for them to go into deep villages and identify such people. Even otherwise, the good performance has been noticed in, for instance, yesterday I said Mudra, the yeah, Mudra scheme is doing very well. Stand Up India is doing very well. Each branch is giving 
uh, funds for SEs, STs and women. So that is why yesterday I made it a point to explain it. That if there are 100 eligible people to get benefit from one scheme, we need to reach all the 100 is my argument. Unless the eligible person himself or herself says, I don't need it, I'm okay without it. We need to reach. And in order to reach, I'm asking the banks to go to the districts. They are not being asked to go to the districts because no work has happened. They are being asked to go to the district to complete those which are incomplete yet. And they shall complete it by 30th of November. Thank you.